What does one call a dinosaur that's a noisy sleeper? A Tyrannosnorus, get it? <laughs> Snorus. <laughs>Hi guys and welcome to the show. In a moment we'll be discussing this new 2023 release from Frederic Constant. This is the premiere. It's a bit of an indication of where some of the watch industry is going. A game changer. It doesn't look like it from the outside but trust me there's a lot going on with this that we need to discuss. But first of all I gotta do a t-shirt check. The new Hugo Mountbatten merchandising has arrived for the holiday season. It'll be in the store linked down below and I'll do a wristwatch check. This is the Casio MRW, uh, amazing piece. I bought this for 20 bucks strictly to review it and ended up keeping it. <laughs> That's what always happens with Casios. They're just so fun and functional and inexpensive. It's difficult to let them go, you know? Anyway, let's get into this. 2023 so far has been a really surprising year for watches. On the one hand, at the entry level, the Swatch Group has taken the lead yet again, with a follow-up of last year's highly successful, always divisive, but queue-forming moonwatch, but this time with the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms collab. The higher to super high end seems to be always carrying on with the ever more mind-bending, haughty, torty feats of engineering, in its own little elitist bubble of ambivalence to us impecunious mortals who don't have millions to burn. And while always fascinating, to the 99.9% .9 of us watch enthusiasts, these unobtainable, typically unpronounceably named, often gaudy or avant-garde in execution, seem to be, well, kind of bad form considering the state of world affairs. I mean, the price of groceries alone every time I go to Trader Blows seems to be the price of a decent watch these days. So how am I going to get excited about a tourbillon within a tourbillon within a tourbillon with a cherry on top? I'm still smiling like the chemo I am with my new Seiko Willet. Welcome to my world. Anyways, I digress before I go on a rant with a pitchfork and a lit torch about the rich and their ridiculous watches. So back to this video topic, and what really is fascinating and revealing stuff in my opinion is what's going on in the mid to entry level tier. With some brands, or should I say conglomerates, doing it better than others. The reason, to quote Slim Charles from The Wire. Game done changed. Game the same, just got more fits. The reason for the increased competition is far more than a simple oversaturation of releases and too many brands spoiling the broth. Check out my recent video on why the watch industry is doomed if you missed out to find out more. And do stay tuned for a follow-up looking at who exactly is to blame. So with that in mind, the mid-tier, as we shall refer to it going forward for the sake of ease, is becoming the newly focused battleground between the conglomerates as they position their horological chess pieces around the board. Let's use the analogy of a chess game a little bit further, shall we? So take example, the Seiko group, right? You got your pawns, they could be Orient. Your bishop, that could be Credo. Your king could be Grand Seiko, of course. The Swatch and Citizen group are the most interesting when it comes to this perpetual competition for dominance of the watch world. As both conglomerates have their own movement manufacturers and with this capability positioning them in the top five families of the 20 or so watch groups throughout the world. Swatch has ETA, while Citizen has Miota and more recently also the Swiss made Le Jupere powering this new FC Premier. In fact, inside this modest 38.5 mm automatic is the Caliber G100, a relatively new movement that has only been on the market a few years. But here's the kicker. It's not an ETA or Salita clone. 
but based on the architecture, wait for it, the redoubtable Miyota 9015. So how is this different from its Japanese progenitor? Well, like ETA, what we see here is the higher grade and further regulated option. It's also been enlarged to be deliberately compatible in dimensions to the ETA 2824, and therefore an alternative for watches designed to house the ETA and Celita equivalent. An extremely clever move indeed. The main spring is upgraded to boost the power reserve to a super handy and weekend friendly 68 hours. And unlike the new Powermatics or modular ETAs, like those in the Hamilton, Longines, Tissot, Satina and so on, where they lowered the beat rate instead to get to the 80 hours, here we still get that smooth 28,800 vibrations per hour, resulting in that smoother sweep synonymous with higher quality movements. Rather than the Miyota's Japanese Parashock, there's the Swiss-made Kif shock absorbers. In fact, to find out more, check out this outstanding article that goes under the three-quarter plate bridge to fully comprehend just how ingenious this mechanism is. And you can find that at thenakedwatchmaker.com. I'll leave a link down below. So Frederic Constant is a brand that has really impressed me in recent years. I came this close to buying that tourbillon, one of the hottest releases of the year so far. The most affordable Swiss made tourbillon on the market also happens to be drop dead gorgeous. But I'm gonna hold off, I've, I've gotta be strong, save for that final grail, which I'll reveal what it is early next year. And also I, I kinda wanna see what they come up with next. You know, they keep putting out these absolute hits, including this, but this is aimed at a very different, but almost more important demographic. Beyond helping to democratize Swiss-made high-end complications like perpetual calendars, tourbillons, and so on that were once only available via your typical super high-end brands like Patek, AP, VC, Breguet, and so on for substantially higher prices, FC has been attacking at every angle. As discussed in a previous video, they were the first ever to hybridize smartwatch technology with traditional mechanics. And now with this next strategic chess move, offering more affordable mechanical watches utilizing Le Joux Pere calibers, bringing a much needed heat to the entry level Swiss demographic we spoke of earlier, one dominated by its nemesis, the Swatch Group. But how is the FC better? Well, in order to maximize profits, the Swatch Group applied their System 51 thinking to their mid-level ETAs. The entirely machine-made and assembled System 51 was the continuation of experiments in trying to produce watches as cheaply as possible that started with Tissot and their Astralon completely plastic movements of the 1970s. Although largely a failed attempt at the time, the research and experience would prove invaluable and was passed on with the subsequent acquisition of Tissot by Swatch in the 1980s. The Powermatic, for example, while offering exceptional value and specs to the consumer, is a cheaply mass-produced, machine-regulated and modular-based simplified ETA. They are extremely difficult to regulate yourself, unlike the more conventional A index that allows for fine adjustment by turning the screw-style plug in the G100 of the FC. The more basic Powermatics are designed to be disposable even having some plastic components, as much as they try to conceal it. When serviced, it's often cheaper just to replace the entire movement, rather than individual components, which costs more for them and require an actual trained human, as Hugo would say. So if a timepiece has gained important sentimental value, would you not want to keep it as original as possible? Or does that not matter to the insides? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So this is my rare Averex dial Hamilton car key, vintage. There's a reason I don't own contemporary Hamilton at the moment. The same reason I'm not really interested in a lot of the entry-level Longines and Tissot. I just don't feel anything. 
Whereas this, I do feel something. I wouldn't agree to borrow this and make a video about it if I didn't think there was something there worth discussing, not only about its mechanics, but also that inexplicable connection. I feel something when I wear this, and that's so important. It's um, difficult to quantify or to put into words. If I was to go Longines, I would go vintage. Same with uh, Tissot. I'd buy the uh, Janeiro chronograph I once owned, you know, that amazing timepiece. It's so important, that connection. If you don't feel anything, what's the point? And not to diminish, if you guys out there love your PRXs and your the modern equivalent of this Hamilton here, that's absolutely fine. I get it, they're fantastic watches, but for me, you know, I want a, a bit more of a deeper relationship. I want to be able to regulate my watches. I want to be able to, you know, service them how I want. It's modest scale, cuff inviting height, darkly thermally blued breguet hands and applied black and Roman numerals, complete with the watchmaker's four for balance, all scream 18th century clock faces. This is then completed by a pocket watch style onion crown, the multi-layered dial with contrasting and richly intricate guilloshade basket weave pattern compared to the sun ray of the raised section framing it. It's exquisitely done in a quality that when in hand, instantly does those words Swiss and made justice. It propagates an old world language, ignoring the fads of design that can often date a watch, but full-heartedly embraces the idiomatic affiliation with the heyday of the clock and watchmaking. There's no jocularity here. FC is always conventionally serious, the sort of thing you'd wear to seek approval when going to meet your partner's family for the first time. The extra precision of the rail track minutes on the periphery not only gives it a strong whiff of carte chic, but a hint of squash-buckling marine chronometer connotations. This is the kind of watch design I could envisage Charles Frodsham, Harrison, and Thomas Mudge having, if they were brands today. Strivingly modest, but not out of frugality, in an understatedly classic Brunellian manner, it makes me want to smoke a pipe wear slippers, a smoking jacket, and sit near an open fire. I think of Richard Norman's Shaw buildings, Bertie Worcester tweed jackets, and stately homes in bucolic settings. You'll pardon me mentioning it, sir, but I discovered this article on our hat rack. This is what is known among the fashionable elite as a 42nd Street skimmer, Jeeves. Gentlemen do not wear straw hats in the metropolis, sir. <sighs> but then turn it around, and it conceals a nifty bit of contemporary thinking. The screwed-in case back is almost a bubble back, but instead of steel, utilizing a sapphire glass box that gives a magnifying effect to fully accentuate the coats of Genève striping, flashes of bluing, beveling, and beguiling mechanics. This glass is not cheap to do by any means. As if to say, hello watch enthusiast, this is what you're paying for, and I'm proud of it. So this wouldn't be an independent video if I didn't address the uh, negatives. This isn't a full review, this is more of a, a, an opinion piece, shall we say. The strap, not a fan of the strap at all. You'll see in the B-roll, I wore it with this Collareb Ostrich strap. I forget the name, but I'll put it on screen. I bought it from Holbens. I've used Collareb for donkey's years, as you guys know. True Italian-made family-owned business. You can get them on Holbens. They're just so supple. I mean, the Italians at the end of the day, Tutto fatto a mano, vero pelle. They are the best at leather goods. Everybody knows that. Yeah, I worried on that. So much more luxurious and supple. This was a little, I know, it was a little stiff. It is real leather, but not my cup of tea. And if you like other styles, Holbens has faux croc like this from Fluco and a bunch of other brands. It's much better in my opinion. What else? The hands. I wish they were more of a royal blue rather than this blacked out it would have just popped so much more they wanted a more classic look i get what they're doing had it have been royal blue i would have you know i'd have probably bought it um it's a good thing it isn't i guess anyway flip it over the rotor it's unidirectional winding not bi-directional winding same as the miota it's based on and it is a little bit noisy the miotas are notorious for that not the end of the world but do be wary if you put this on a winder to correctly set it otherwise it's not going to um 
uh, what's the word uh, in Italiano? Ricaricare, uh, wind, there we go. You can see I'm really kind of nitpicking. There's not much more. Oh, 50 meters water resistance. But at the end of the day, this is a dress watch. It's not a sports watch, so entirely forgivable. It's an outstanding movement. You know, uh, it's shortcomings aside, I would pick this over the compromised ETAs any day of the week. The decision to make it a limited edition of 500 is something I can't quite make up my mind about. Is it a good thing or bad? On the one hand, it helps to protect its value and makes it more collectible. On the other, should it not be available to all and thus give the masses who love it a little bit more time to save up? Because we don't, of course, all have ducktails amounts of disposable money. Or maybe this is a test run of further things to come. Regardless of the strategy, this is an undeniably tasteful watch with infinitely more class and a sophisticated look than much of the brashness currently out there that those with too much money and too little class seem to lap up in our black mirror, keeping up with the Philistines' tick-tocking time bomb reality. But crucially, it gives the Longines Master Collection a good run for its value and while substantially more expensive than the cost-cutting Tissot equivalent, it has longevity and bewitching refinement. I assume it had got into your wardrobe by mistake, sir, or else that it had been placed there by your enemies. I will have you know, Jeeves, that I bought this in Cannes. And wore it uh, every night at the casino. Beautiful women used to try and catch my eye. Presumably they thought you were a waiter, sir. So... At the end of the day, I not only buy watches because I love the history, design, function, engineering, or how they look and feel on the wrist, but also because I want to support a brand I believe in. FC, with their 30 plus proprietary movements, consistency in what they put out, constant innovation and sheer elegance, feels much more of a real Swiss watchmaker over the increasingly more clinical business approach of watchmaking when it comes to swatch and its disciples. Obviously, this FC will not set the whole watch world ablaze, like a plastic speedy, but it's a quiet storm or a subtle game changer, one that synthesizes familiar ancient modes while free of any new money vulgarity to its price tag, and perhaps more importantly, a firm indication of where FC is going. I guess you could call it sensible innovation. So there we have it. I bid you farewell from the war room. Don't forget to add your thoughts down below in the comments. What would you like to see from these brands? What do you feel they're getting right, getting wrong? All of that good stuff. Also, do check out this video if you'd like to see more free and independent content. Speaking of which, you know what to do. The best way to support more free and independent content is to hit that like button. I will catch you in the next one. Onwards and upwards. Thank you for watching. Ciao.